I think there's a big difference between analytics and numbers and insights, which are actual things that you can use to grow your business. And so insights are the competitive advantages, the things you know about your market, your world, your users that no one else knows that you can really use to double down and find growth. So I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Hotel Tonight, which is a fantastic uh, uh, hotel booking app, they figured out that their conversion rate on their paid acquisition um, was double over 4G wireless connections than it was with people connected over Wi-Fi. And that's kind of counterintuitive. Like, wait, okay, it's way easier to use stuff on my phone when I'm on Wi-Fi than when I'm on 4G. And by digging into the data, that's exactly the problem, is that when people were on Wi-Fi, they had no problem shopping multiple competitors' websites. If you're on Wi-Fi, you will deal with the mobile web version of Expedia and Priceline and Orbitz, and you will shop for rooms. But if you're on a limited bandwidth connection, you don't want to fight with a mobile web experience from four other competitors. So they learned that when people were bandwidth constrained, if the deal was good enough, you know, if it kind of fit there, whatever was they were kind of expecting, then they would book. And so they saw double the conversion rate over these wireless connections. So they shifted all their money away from Wi-Fi enabled data connections to uh, wireless connections and double their conversion rate on their acquisition. And that's an insight. That's something that no one else, that you can't learn without really being able to dig deep into the data. Airbnb also did something similar. Um, what Airbnb figured out is that uh, listings with high quality photos received two to three times the bookings of other listings. And so they did something that didn't scale. They went out, they bought a um, uh, SLR, you know, a DSLR, and went in around New York and shot really high quality photos to kind of prove out that that insight that they found about the higher booking rate was really true. And they found that out. And then once they learned that, then they started building out a network of photographers around the world in order to uh, scale that. And so RJ Metrics calls this your your. Uh, golden motion, or um, Josh Elman calls it your magic number. Being able to really hone in on that insight and, and derive growth from it is, is super critical for, for any startup. Insights are not always completely quantifiable. And to be honest, a lot of the uh, apocryphal stories you hear about these magic numbers, like Facebook's 10 friends in seven days and Twitter's 30 followers is, is more of a guideline. You know, there's a lot of question about causation versus correlation and that type of thing. But it's it's more of a, it's something that you know that you can kind of drive towards. And so they're not always perfect and not every business is gonna be able to kind of crystallize that one small thing, but you should look for indicators in your product use that kind of suggest that when people hit these milestones, they're going to be better customers, better users over time. So um, you might find that uh, it's a type of person you know, you might find uh, that it's, um, you know, a net, you know, what their net promoter score is. So you can try to quantify the unquantifiable, but yeah, sometimes insights are things that you can't actually put a number on. Very early on in a company's uh, life, you'll use a lot of qualitative feedback. And that's frankly, because that's all you have. To run true A-B tests, multivariate tests, any level of statistical confidence is going to take you way too long. You just don't have the traffic or the volume to run many tests. But that doesn't mean you can't optimize, and optimizing is really driven off these other types of insights. So um, whether you know they're qualitative feedback from uh, surveys or whether they're uh, insights from your support team and your help desk or your sales team or um, customer development interviews, you know, um, really... Uh, that's kind of very early stage uh, insights, very qualitative driven. As you get bigger, as you scale to much bigger user bases, you can run experiments at a much higher velocity. You can invest a lot more in experimentation and you can uncover statistical truths about your business that um, you can really hone in on. You know, if you only have a thousand people coming to your website a month, you can't find a magic number, right? It's just, there's way too much variance. Um, but if you have millions and millions of people you can get pretty close to that number. So I think as you get bigger, you'll be able to run uh, more quantitative experiments and really drill in on that. Very early on, you have to mix your quantitative experiments with 
qualitative feedback and that type of thing to let you optimize and continue to learn even in a low traffic environment. So there's a couple types of growth. Obviously you have sustainable and unsustainable growth. And unsustainable growth happens when you don't have product market fit, but you've been able to tap a channel that's been really performant. So any kind of uh, Facebook app that gets really big and then flames out, for example, is a perfect example of unsustainable growth. Sustainable growth, on the other hand, comes from people who really love your product and who are retained over a very long period of time. And so obviously as a startup, as a company trying to create a lot of lasting value and get very big, sustainable growth is core to all of that. And sustainable growth comes from connecting the right person to the must-have experience of your product. And when you do that, you create a user who um, is active and engaged and retained and, and that type of thing. And so. Uh, when you're hustling for early stage growth, you want to be careful that you're not optimizing for unsustainable growth and that you're actually finding people that are going to be long-term users who are going to refer their friends to your product, who are going to be advocates for your product out there. And, and that's really the foundation of, of long-term successful companies. There's a lot of merit in studying what other companies have done and trying to re reverse engineer and figure out what's worked and what hasn't worked. I think um, you have to be careful on a couple of levels. One is that companies tell revisionist histories of what actually happened. So the stories that you hear are not always exactly what happened. And so taking today's stories and trying to apply them to your company at an early stage usually won't work. The second thing is that your business, your customers, are completely different than any other business. It doesn't even matter if that business has been in your same vertical, like your economics, your model, your product feature set, probably who your target customer is have all changed. And whether it's just a function of time or that you're actually in a different vertical or whatnot, those, um, those differences mean that tactics and strategies won't map one-to-one. -one. And if you try to just take something that someone else has done and apply it to your business, um, it likely won't work. I'm a big fan of the saying, steal like an artist. And I think that you can steal from other people, but what artists do is they steal from other people and then they make it their own. And I think there's a difference between just copying what other people have done versus being inspired by what they've done and applying it to your business. And I think that can actually be really effective. I think some of the most transformative business growth comes from people applying things that have occurred in outside industries in their industry. But you have to, uh, you have to make it your own. You can't just make a carbon copy of it and expect it to work. So the concept of a funnel is really important for kind of user accounting and being able to figure out if something's working, a conversion rate, money goes in at the top or time goes in at the top, users go in and come out the bottom. And so I think it's an effective analogy. I also think it's a little limiting um, and, and kind of dangerous for growth too. Um, I think the best companies don't think in terms of funnels, they think in terms of loops. And it's, it, it's kind of, um, it's more of a mindset thing. Like if you think of your business as a loop where there's inputs and then there's a feedback loop and it kind of uh, continues to grow the business, it's a continuous process, it's actually a lot more powerful. And it could be a viral loop but you could have a paid acquisition loop, you can have an organic loop. But if you think of your business as an input that then drives kind of continuous uh, acquisition, it's a much more powerful metaphor to think about growth than a funnel, which is kind of one way. And even if you have a funnel and then you're talking about referral at the end of it, just the notion of kind of a, a one-way mindset can kind of be limiting. So I like to think in terms of loops um, because I think that the fastest growing businesses are built on the back of loops. They're not built on funnels. Every product needs to be seeded in way, one way or another. And you can seed it through PR, word of mouth, personal connections, or paid uh, acquisition. And so I actually believe that even with a, a free product or um, a product that is a freemium model or that type of thing, for the very early first group to try to get some learning, I think it's totally okay to pay for initial uh, users. I will caveat that and say that you need a really strong loop to make those paid users turn into free users. You know, I think one of the problems with paid acquisition is it can kind of turn into to a very addictive kind of thing and it can be unsustainable. So I think if you look at like Groupons and some other companies like that, that 
it's really easy to get addicted to high velocity paid growth, but uh, it's ultimately unsustainable. And so I think you have to really figure out if you have a sustainable growth engine, even if you're using some paid channels very early on to get just that seed level. But I want to be careful and, and not advocate for burning a bunch of cash when you don't have any immediate opportunity to make it back, um, because I do believe in ROI-based marketing. But I also believe that very early on, you need to get initial people from somewhere. And you could spend three months trying to get PR to pay off, which is just as dangerous as, as burning cash, you know, some other ways. Organic growth can be much more expensive than paid growth if it's done wrong. You know, if you wait for it forever or if you don't seed it properly, uh, you can do a lot of work on the organic growth side without any, any results. Tom Tungas from uh, Redpoint um, has a great explanation of kind of the progression of growth where he talks about performance-based paid advertising being a very fast cycle time, fast response time where you can where you can grow it quickly, get immediate feedback. And so it's a very easy way to easy thing to do first. And then you can layer on top of that, you know, some of the longer term, harder to measure, less immediate performance stuff like content marketing, brand marketing, and that type of thing. And so I really like that model of thinking about things. It's like, what's the, what are the things that maybe don't have massive scale? Like you can say, obviously the brand over a long enough horizon has massive scale, right? Coca-Cola, perfect example. But in a very short time horizon, if you're a startup, investing in brand early on is probably the wrong investment because you'll run out of cash before your brand really starts to pay ton of dividends. Now, there are exceptions to that rule, but I think most of those exceptions kind of prove the rule rather than, you know, invalidate it. So I think if you work on fast feedback cycles with like paid or things that you can get immediate answers back, it's a much better uh, idea, much more successful.